not a single playoff appearance. Joining me right now uh, from John Dadian and Associates is political analyst John Dadian with our state of San Diego. John, welcome back to the show there, my man. Good morning. I know uh, you were uh, at Petco on Sunday night, and uh, I, let's let's report on San Diego's concert scene. Pretty solid? Screaming my lungs out with 40,000 of my best friends to welcome Paul McCartney. How fun. about that? That well, is just great. Event. And you know what? You can almost always find somebody. Whatever the event is, you'll find somebody that is a naysayer that says, you know, it wasn't that great. I haven't heard anybody say anything negative about that concert at all. So uh, that speaks volumes to the kind of show and the performer that uh, Paul McCartney is. So good times. Good times, John. It was the third time I saw him, so I've been very fortunate. Hey, I'm, I was uh, taking a look at the DeMaio-Peters debate last week, and Carl DeMaio says uh, Peters is bad, and Peters says DeMaio is bad, and Peters says DeMaio is uh, too far to the right, and DeMaio says Peters is too far to the left, and then both of them say that they're going to reach across the aisle. <laughs> and that, and actually, that's what they're doing. They're, um, when you say reach across the aisle, most people think that means as far as working with the other side. And that is one of the mantras they're trying to say. But what they're really reaching is they're trying to reach for the middle. They're reaching for those undecided voters. They're reaching for those independent voters. Because in that district, it's a huge block of declined to state voters. And that's really uh, where they're trying to reach for. So how are they, what are they doing then to try to make that happen other than say, please vote for me? Well, the, the, again, the two things that they're doing, I mean, it's pretty much basic uh, political consulting 101. They're securing their base. They're making sure that not only uh, are, are their supporters you know, happy with them, but they will actually get out to vote. But then they have to try to both co- convert or try to sway the other side. And, you know, it, it, it is a very, uh, very tough battle with uh, both of them. And it is interesting that they're uh, both singing the same mantra as far as I'm the one that can work across the aisle. Here's the interesting thing that I think, Chris, is if you see these commercials, as I predicted, you know, almost every week for the past two months on your show, mm-hmm. it's extremely hard hitting. You know, actually, one commercial even said the other guy was lying. But what you haven't seen, which I'm always holding my breath to see, if anybody starts talking about a lawsuit because it's illegal, you haven't seen seen that yet you haven't seen that yet so this is as hard hitting as it gets and it's going to continue to go we're, we're exactly you know uh, from from today four weeks and some money being funneled in from uh, both sides on on this particular race it seems both the left and the right care uh, pretty significantly over who wins this particular district and again, I, I always look for that as far as who's paying for it. If it's, um, you'll notice that the campaigns, uh, that the ads that are paid for by the campaigns themselves need that disclosure by the candidate saying, I'm the candidate and I approve of this message. So you need to look at the other commercials. A lot's being paid by the Democratic uh, caucus back in D.C. and a lot's being paid by the Republican caucus. And of course, the campaigns don't have control over those commercials. All right, let's come back to some of the uh, the politicians that stay here in town. Let's talk about the the city council members. Uh, we're in kind of a, a weird uh, session right now where the you know the city council redistricts, and we already know who's gonna who's gonna get into those uh, positions. So Ed Harris knew this going in that he was going to be kind of a lame duck in that in that uh, uh, council seat that had been previously held by. Uh, Mayor Faulkner. So he's in there and he said, hey, I'm just going to try to do the right thing. But now he's he's kind of out there and, and some people are saying, look, he's making some moves, even though he's not going to be there very long. Belmont Park, he said, we don't need to to, to uh, look at changing the lease on Belmont Park. And uh, he's also now with David Alvarez saying these water restrictions that we've got that are that are uh, recommended, we should make those mandatory. Is he overstepping his bounds as what is uh, basically a, a, a seat filler right now? Or is he you know really taking hold as a, as a council? member and saying, I'm going to do what I can while I'm here. Well, certainly some people uh, think that he's uh, uh, overstepping his bounds. I'm not one of those. Uh, the, the, key, the key when he was appointed was the rhetorical question everybody asked was, was he just going to be a caretaker or was he going to be an actual uh, council member? Um, so, you know, you could argue which is better for both sides. I will tell you my opinion about this council member is he is one of the hardest working politicians I've seen. He is not taking it as a caretaker position. You know, I didn't know if I was stalking him or he was talking to me because I've seen him at every event throughout the uh, second district that you could think of. I mean, I was out in Ocean Beach and he even served me chili. So um, <laughs> he, he, 
he is taking he taking his position serious, and I have no problem with him uh, uh, being an activist and going right up to uh, you know the deadline of when he goes out of office uh, in December. Mayor Faulkner did such a great job representing that second uh, district, which mostly coastal, et cetera. They didn't deserve you know a caretaker for the last six months. They deserve somebody, and I think he has tried you know with a few exceptions, most notably the minimum wage. But I think he has tried to fulfill the Mayor Faulkner uh, legacy as far as taking care of the district. So do you see Ed Harris is making a political move in the future here? Let's just speculate a little bit, John. Is he uh, is he kind of setting himself up to say, look, in a short period of time, I did A, B, C, D, and E while I was on the city council. Now's the time to make me whatever that next position is he could be looking for. I don't know if he's setting himself up, but I will tell you, that's certainly the buzz out there of a lot of people that's been impressed. And I'll make the comparison about when Todd Gloria was interim mayor and then made the statement that, you know, he would not run for the full position. Everybody, by the end of his interim mayorship, everybody sang Todd Gloria's praises as far as what a good job he did and as far as how he worked with the council, both sides of the aisle, et cetera. I think that's what you hear about Ed Harris for the reasons I just said. He worked the district hard. He was out there. I don't think the guy ever turned down an within his district. And so I think that's going to be his legacy. And clearly that bodes well for his future that people are going to say, hey, he did a you know pretty good job. He could have been a caretaker and, you know, just been a had the title for six months, but he didn't do that. I, I think that bodes very well for him. All right. John Dating with Dating and Associates in our uh, weekly State of San Diego report. John, thanks so much once again. and look forward to talking to you again next week there, my friend. Very good, Chris. Take care. All right. John Dady and Dady and Associates. Uh, check him out uh, online. And also, uh, he uh, he does a great job. He, he's really a, a fine promoter of this segment, too, on his Facebook page. Uh, check that out. And I love watching, uh, you know, what John's up to on a, on a regular basis. The...